Hey folks, welcome to this episode of Road Hard Restorations. My name's Steve, and on this video, we're gonna yank this little 318 out of here so we can get the engine bay ready for paint. All right, in this video, plan is to get this engine out. Um, but I'm gonna be painting the whole car, including the engine bay. Um, so I'm gonna need to get all of this out of the way anyway. So I'm just going to take care of that now get the bumper pulled off um, that way I don't have, don't run the risk of damaging the grill with the um, engine hoist or anything I need to get out of the way anyway might as well do it now all right let's see if we can get this uh, bumper off of here All right, so what I did is I'm wedging the pinch bar between the bracket and the bumper, the prime in a way that forces uh, the bumper or up against the, uh, the bolt as I'm loosening it, keeps it from popping out. That made that easy. All right, the bumper off of there, the uh, 74 here has a serious uh, reinforcement bar uh, behind the uh, chrome bumper here. Well, if I knew this car had this uh, steel reinforcement behind the bumper, I would have just taken the brackets off and taken the whole thing off as one unit, but that's okay. I'll still be able to work around it. I'm going to take this little filler piece off here. That way you can get in here and uh, paint it properly. All right, several ways I can approach this uh, engine pull. Like, where do you start, right? Work by systems, pulling out all the electrical and pulling out all the fluids and hoses. But I think I'm gonna start with the fluids, get those out of the way. Just kind of start, I think, from the, uh, the front back, outside in, uh, a lot of the stuff on the firewall and the fender aprons. And then I'm gonna do the wiring. I just kind of peel everything back until I get down to the engine. Uh, not, you don't have to do it that way. Typically, I'll just do the, uh, I'm just doing an engine pull. Uh, I'll do the radiator and fluids, hoses, electrical, um, then disconnect it and pull it. Not worry about anything else. Since I'm pulling everything out, I want to be a little more methodical about it. So let's get to it. I'm going to get out my cardboard creeper. I right, got my 916 Allen wrench. Let's get this thing. this thing apart here. Get this thing drained. Ooh, nice and black. I got the oil drained. The water is draining right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling out some of these hoses and hopefully uh, make it into the bucket here. Here's a tip. If your uh, hose is stuck and you're not going to reuse it, just put a slice down the side, the razor blade or a knife. So I'm not going to throw this away yet because I need to uh, match it up at the auto parts store. Let's go ahead and pull the fan shroud off of here. All right, so I'm not going to take the uh, lower uh, bolt out of the radiator yet because I haven't taken the bottom hose off of there. I might have to wrestle with it a little bit um, and don't want the radiator just flopping around. So I'm going to go ahead and go into there, uh, get the lower hose off of there, and then uh, I'll be able to pull the radiator out. Ugh. That's nasty. Throw that in the junk pile. However, I don't actually throw anything away away. Um, until I kind of get the project done. You never know if you need it for reference, for size, fitment or um, simply can't get another one and you have to make do with what you have um, or you realize as you're putting it together oh yeah i did need that <laughs> once the car's done then you can go through and sell what you can recoup some of your money 
to somebody who's actually restoring one. Okay, there's three bolts holding this bracket to the fender well. Why do they have two different sizes? I have no idea. Alrighty, what's next? Let's get that lower radiator hose off. Because as you're lifting the motor out, it tends to catch on here. This is some of the junk that you find in old cars. This is the bolt that was holding the alternator. With the uh, lock washers all split and spread out. This one's even worse. You don't use lock washers on there. You need a flat washer. This is all galled up around the outside. So I'm just gonna throw this whole thing away. Get a new one. I thought I'd move you a little closer here. The fastener that goes here, completely gone. See the battery trays rusted out a few spots. Definitely seen a lot worse, but it's all holy right through here. Let's see if I can get these bolt out without giving myself tetanus or breaking it off. Why is it red? All right, can somebody else tell me? Is the 74 Duster supposed to only have one horn or two? Now that's really weird. I mean, the bracket's even red, but it's on top of the blue paint. So somebody got in there with the red spray paint and sprayed that area red for some reason. Okay. Thought maybe for a second they got it out of a red vehicle, but there's red here and here and here down here and even down in here it made me think well maybe they replaced this panel at one point it was an accident this came off of a red car but that doesn't look like the case because there was red on top of the blue so just like this black is on top of the blue somebody spray bombed this black a lot of it came off with the pressure washer but uh i'll have to clean the rest of this off before i uh prime and paint it sheet metal under here actually looks in good shape Alrighty. It's a bit overkill. I got four or five feet of cable here. It says four gauge, 100% copper. So that's awesome. Be able to use, reuse one of these ends, cut it down to length, and I have uh, additional copper ends and a crimping tool to make my own cable using this as a source or donor. Looks like it had a repair done at one point. All right, so I know there's a bunch of different ignition boxes for these Mopars, different years, different models. I honestly don't know one from the other. You tell me. Is this one of the good ones? This was made in USA. It's not all leaking out. And it was functional. Looks like a good one to me. One that works is the one you need. Okay, wire nuts do not belong on an automobile. All right, get some more of this, uh, get the rest of the wiring out of here. Got a ground wire that's actually loose on here. Spark plug wires off and kind of get them out of my way. Okay. okay. Power steering pump. You get an old car, you want to check everything. I mean, this ground wire is completely loose here. Well, we're getting there. 
All right, so I'm almost ready to pull this engine. Still have a few more things to disconnect. I gotta pull the starter motor out. I need to disconnect the header pipe from the manifolds. I'm gonna go ahead and take the manifolds off the heads while it's in the car. It's just two less things to, to hang up on something or get in the way, a little less weight. I'm um, gonna pull the carburetor off once uh, just before I'm ready to pull it so it's not in the way. Um, and then, uh, so I'm not gonna use a carb plate on this little two barrel manifold. I'm actually gonna run a chain from one head uh, across to the other, back of the other head. Still need to disconnect the uh, bell housing bolts. I'm gonna leave the transmission in the car and then just pull the engine out by itself. Ready to pull the engine out. I have the floor jack up holding the transmission and everything's disconnected. I got the starter out, the exhaust manifolds. Um, so let's get this thing yanked out of here. All right, we got the engine out. Once I get it up on the engine stand, we'll see what uh, I need to order as far as parts go. Got the engine bay to clean up. A lot of little pieces to remove. Transmission, K-frame, power steering. Get all that out. Start scrubbing, sanding, priming, and painting. Ta-da!